a catastrophic event is about to take place in a matter of days. I'm strongly urging everyone to take what I'm about to tell you very seriously. If you do not understand what I'm saying, keep watching till you do. Because if you turn away from this video, you will regret it dearly. The earth is being rocked with a strong magnetic pulse that is devastating all the beings in it. And it's about to get 1000 times worse. Here's how this magnetic pulse is affecting us as Since electricity and magnetism are really just two forms of the same thing, a magnet can affect the electrical signals in your brain. Now this is your brain. It's basically an electric web of billions of neurons wired together. When a strong magnetic pulse hits these neurons, it alters their electric current. The process is called transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS. Electricity is the currency of the brain. All thoughts, all beliefs, all actions are just electrical impulses. And so TMS, we're actually able to get in there and influence the currency of the brain focally and non-invasively. The stronger the magnetic pulse, the deeper into the brain it goes. And by adjusting the pattern of the pulse, you can change the way that part of the brain functions. Turn a part of the brain up or down, or temporarily turn it off, or temporarily turn it off, or temporarily turn it off. This magnetic field is having an effect on Earth as we speak. These cars are being lifted in the air due to this magnetic field. And you and everything you know will be lifted in a moment. You hear a lot of people talking about the rapture, and, you, and you're trying to understand what are they talking about. Uh, raptured, lifted, you know, it's a magnetic pulse from a planet that is coming and I'm going to explain a little bit to you about this planet that is coming. The government knows all about this planet. This planet been here since the days of Sodom and Gomorrah and the days of Noah and each civilization was destroyed by this planet. This planet it calls Severe weather patterns, unprecedented. And when this planet comes close to our planet, it changes our planet to evil because when God designed the universe, He designed this evil planet to come to the evil. Galatians 6 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, He will also reap. If man becomes evil on this planet and makes this planet an evil planet, he shall also reap an evil planet. An evil planet is on its way. Psalm 7:16. The trouble they cause recoils on them. It comes down on you. Their violence comes down on their own heads. So this planet affects the minds it is killing animals. Animals are dying off. The fish is dying off. It is disrupting the whole planet. Another small life lost on the vast Kazakh grasslands. Officials estimate that in the last two weeks as many as 12,000 saiga antelope have died. No one can understand what's happened because we see dead animals concentrated in a certain area. The government is baffled. This phenomena took place not only in the area where mass death of saiga antelope took place, it also happened in another district some time ago where strange white fog was seen. And as their numbers plummet once again, this graceful sight is becoming ever rarer. These are the signs of God. And as this planet moves closer, it is throwing off red iron oxide evil red iron oxide which is affecting the minds of the animals the humans and the whole entire planet with its strong evil magnetic field as the magnetic field affects the earth and the minds of the people it becomes more evil and violence is about to break out to a scale unprecedented never seen before in the history of mankind And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, 
and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places, and all these are the beginnings of sorrow. Coming at you live from Gilbert, Arizona, Southeast Phoenix. This is unedited footage of the sunset. Are you serious? Now as this planet approaches our planet, it lets off iron oxide. It has a meteor tail, three million miles long. And this meteor tail, every time this planet turns and swerves and goes around something, it spreads out like wings. And those wings will be a sign of the return of Christ. It will be a sign. And I just said it what it's going to be. A sign. Those wings are going to spread out and it's going to have a long tail and it's going to look like Jesus Christ on the cross. This prophecy stated that if man did not turn from evil and place himself at the feet of God, the planet would self-destruct and the events described in the book of Revelations would indeed come to pass. This is your final warning. If you did not hear anything that anyone has been telling you, at least hear this. Your doom is coming. The planet will be rising. The, the, the two magnetic fields is coming into each other and they will pull on this earth in such a way that you have never seen ever in life if you are not straight with God you better get yourself straight the end of this world is right here at hand and it's gonna be like in the days of Noah it's gonna be like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah you know you have an ounce of time days days so I'll do a quick recap. The iron oxide from this evil planet is causing an effect on the minds of the people. And it's as the planet gets closer, it's going to get worse and worse. The police, you think they're bad now, they're going to be a, a thousand percent worse. It's going to wreak havoc. The World War III is going to start it's going to affect the minds this magnetic pulse this field you know and it's going to affect animals and everything like never before so you should be ready to go and i'm not talking about world ready i'm not talking about prepper ready i'm talking about god ready because this planet is going to be destroyed it's done and you can be deceived by the beast at this time the elections is going to go horrible Everything is going to go bad. This is Venezuela right here. Everything is about to go bad. You know, and basically people are getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And just think about people who are already on men mental medications. You know, uh, it is time to get yourself out of the city. It is time to flee to the mountains. It is time to set your teepee out in the wilderness. If you ain't understanding what I'm saying, then you will not. Turn off the video. Go to hell. If you do understand what I'm saying, please get yourself and your house in order. Get away from the city. This is Raptor News. Peace. Dependent military families, uh, the uh, husbands and wives of the men and women in the military, has begun conducting briefings for dependents. These would be the dependents that are stationed on the near the East Coast, the Atlantic Ocean, near the West Coast, the Pacific Ocean, and near the Gulf Coast. At these briefings, are being told the following: that there's this planetary-sized object called Nibiru that's coming into our solar system. It's going to be causing very severe problems much more so than it already is, very soon. And that they're being put on standby to bug out. They're being told that there'll be little notice, possibly two weeks or so, before they're given the notice to bug out. 
Oh, they're also, by the way, they're being shown a map, Vance. Four to six weeks is probably pretty likely. Probably not more than three or four months. So that's that's our belief. I hope we're wrong. I hope that uh, this turns out to be a uh, incorrect information. If it is, well, that's great. If it's not, if it turns out to be correct, then you've got your heads up. So I asked a question this morning to all of you out there, to the several thousand of you listening to me on the morning of July 11, 2012. What would you do if he had six years to prepare? What would you do if he had six months to prepare? What would you do if he had six weeks to prepare? Mike, it was two weeks ago today that I uh, announced uh, the information I received from two confidential sources. Now, one was uh, a confidential source who is a dependent of a Department of Defense uh, employee, part of continuity of government contingency planning, by the way. Uh, not all DOD and not all uh, government employees are part of uh, COG, uh, continuity of government contingency planning. Anyway, at this briefing, which was, they had to sign a non-disclosure agreement before the briefing began, they were told that they were putting on, being put on standby for evacuation, that they may get as much two weeks notice, they may not, and they started talking to, telling these dependents about Nibiru, Planet X, and how this planetary-sized object was going to uh, cause massive flooding uh, on all coastal areas. Now, the map they were shown is very similar to the map of my DVD. I need to get a copy of that to you, by the way, Mike, if I haven't. And um, that was pretty much it for that, that source. Uh, the second source uh, is in the uh, Department of Homeland Security, and that source basically confirmed what the first source said uh, without uh, going any further on that. And then, then the following day, or the same day, I should say, you came up with uh, your own sources, Mike, and uh, why don't you tell us about those? Well, um, the source that, that first told me about this, and, and I've been doing some digging since then, but the, the, first, the source that first told me about this is a director-level individual for a foreign intelligence agency that I have uh, occasion to speak with uh, now and then. And what I was told, and I was told this probably maybe 60 or 90 days ago, and um, I, I didn't put a lot of credence in it at the time, but as I've uh, researched, I, I have to put more and more credence in it. And, and as a qualifier, I, I have to say this up front that, you know, perhaps this is being floated as disinformation to discredit people and to discredit. So I, I have to give a caveat there. I don't think it is, but it could be just that, that type of effort. But I was told that to be very prepared on the dates of uh, August 17th and the dates of uh, September 26th, that a planet-sized object would be passing, its, uh, passing very, very near the Earth. And I was told that the distance, the closest distance, would be um, maybe 5 to 10 Earth diameters. It would come that close and that we should be on the uh, be prepared for massive earthquakes and as a result of those earthquakes uh, tsunami level flooding in uh, coastal uh, areas now since that time i've done some more digging and i, I spoke with uh, intelligence sources within the u.s who not only confirmed that but added some more fuel to the fire and one of the things is, is that this object is coming in at an extremely high rate of speed. And um, what, uh, what the, the, the other concern is, besides just the, the, the near passage, is that as this thing passes through the uh, asteroid belt, it's going to disturb the orbit, the stable orbits of many asteroids that are out there that are orbiting. And be like a uh, a cue ball on a billiard table and send these things going helter-skelter in every direction so that no one knows where they're going to end up and uh, what their ultimate destinations are going to be and that we may be living with after effects of this for a number of years into the future absolutely and uh, then you had a second source uh, i understand as well well, the second source was the one within the U.S. government. There was another. Uh, my, my primary source was from a foreign intelligence agency. Right, right, right. 
Well, uh, the the distance that you described, uh, ten times the the Earth, the Earth is about twenty four thousand miles in diameter. Um, so, uh, ten times that would only be a quarter million miles. Um, <laughs> that's about the distance of the moon, by the way. Yeah, that that's close. And and uh, I, I've been told that this the size of this object um, could be as big as 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 the moon. Could be. Um, it it's it is being tracked currently and the primary tracking station is that large uh dish in uh, Puerto Rico I believe it is so um yeah i'm i'm um i'm i'm trying to learn more and as much as i can as quickly as i can because this will affect a lot of people now i also have to tell you i have been told point blank information that I can't share because I said I was told if I go on the air with this that my my truck's going to blow up with me in it <laughs> and uh okay you know, uh and and mostly what that has to do with the high rate of speed it's traveling at and how it achieved that high rate of speed um you know, the, the the term slingshot comes to mind right right so, uh, well when, when this you know when this thing comes into our solar system Mike, it it's, it it comes over. It's coming from the south, by the way, and as it gets clo deeper into the so our solar system, uh, approaching our sun, it picks up speed. Uh, does a loop to loop around the speed around the sun, excuse me, where it slows down and then and then starts picking up speed as it goes back out. Uh, now the size you're describing is not the size I've been hearing for forever for the tenth planet. This sounds like something far smaller. Our moon is a fairly small rock compared to the size of uh, planet X or Nibiru. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm a bit confused on that. Uh, I have been told also that Nibiru or the tenth planet has a debris field about a quarter million miles wide, which would put us well within the debris field if it's coming that close. Well, you know, John, I, I, I have to be honest here. In, there's, I don't know what I don't know. And I'm having a hard time discerning what is real information from what is disinformation. Right, right. Because that, that's one of the things that, that um, the powers that be will do is they will give you bits of information, but they'll also give you bits of disinformation. Right. And so it, it's up to us to use our, our own discernment to try to determine, hey, what's real and, and, and what's bunk? And uh, I, I'm, I'm struggling with this. I, I have agreed, to be very agree. Well, I, I, uh, the quant and I've described this live on here. I know you typically don't listen to my show because you're trying to get ready for your own mic. But typically what I do with this is, uh, first of all, I describe the quandary that I find myself in and I think you find yourself in also. We come across information like this uh, from reliable sources that don't know each other. If it's true and we don't report it, then we could be directly responsible for a lot of lives being lost. If it's not true and we report it, well, then we get some egg on our face and life goes on. Uh, what I'm doing, uh, Mike, is encouraging people to look at these dates as a uh, opportunity for a training uh, opportunity for us to evaluate our prudent preparedness, uh, develop a plan A, a plan B, maybe even a plan C, uh, to be able to evacuate if we live on a coastal area and be able to have a safe haven to go to. Uh, the dates of August 17th and September 26th may or may not be the accurate dates on one hand. On the other, the scientists I work with, and I work with a number of scientists, uh, they're all in agreement that, yes, this thing's coming. And when it does come, it's going to cause massive flooding on all coastal areas. As you probably know, Mike, I've debriefed about two dozen Navy veterans who were at the classified briefings, telling them that during their lifetimes this coastal flooding would occur. So I agree with you. It's a quandary. Uh, it's something that we need to encourage people to, to do their own research, to uh, achieve their own level of discernment, and make decisions based on the knowledge that they gain. Well, well John, if worse comes to worse, it may be a good time to take the family on a camping trip and just be a, away from any large urban areas at all because if, if something of, of this magnitude occurs, there's going to be mass panic. And when that happens, uh, your freeways are going to be like parking lots.
and you're not going to be able to get away. You're going to be stuck where you are. Temperatures are going to flare. Uh, people are going to become desperate. And it, it, it might not be a bad time to uh, take advantage of um, you know, a national park somewhere. Take the family out camping. Be prepared. Take as much stuff as, as you can. Um, you know that that's that's useful utilitarian uh, utilitarian to you and and just be somewhere else if if you've got yourself a a cabin or a vacation home or you own rural property someplace then uh, better yet you know it, it's a uh, you might like i guess you do, you may just want to be out of the cities well and um you're right it, you know turn it into an enjoyable occasion like you said a, a training exercise if you will so that you know you you at least minimize the risk, and you don't get yourself caught up in uh, a massive urban uh, uh, situation, you know, where where you're you're sitting on a freeway and you can't move because it's bumper to bumper, and the cars around you are running out of gas because they've been sitting there for ten hours idling. Right. Well, I, I I've talked occasionally. I did recently about the aerial photograph of Houston and Texas when people were trying to evacuate when that the hurricane was headed that way. I, I counted the lanes up that weren't moving all in one direction. I think it was 12 or 14 lanes, uh, interstate highway and, and outer roads. It was amazing, an amazing, very scary photograph. Mike, we got a caller here, James from Fort Worth. Good morning, James. Hey, guys. How are you all doing? Good. Um, I, I was wondering, is there anything to be looking for uh, through other organizations, maybe the Navy around their uh, naval bases in Norfolk and so other places, like uh, just a sign that they're, like, moving everything out, you know, getting it away from the shores? I was wondering if there's anything uh, uh, along those lines that maybe we could look for to give us a little bit of a heads up. James, uh, the Office of Naval Intelligence, ONI, uh, have been evacuating their people from coastal areas for a while. The CIA and National Security Agency began in 2005 to evacuate their people to Denver. So uh, there's not much you're going to see because all the um, people who are part of continuity of government, the majority of them anyway, have already left the coastal areas. Yeah, that, well, I've got a sister over there, and that's, uh, I, she's in North Carolina, and so I was just wanting to... Uh, because is she I've been east watching, or west? Is she is your sister east or west of the Blue Ridge Parkway? Uh, she's east, and um, uh, well, the U.S. Navy, James, the U.S. Navy, not John Moore. The U.S. Navy says the East Coast will take damage up to the Blue Ridge Parkway, which is a hundred miles from the ocean. Yeah, yeah. She she lives well. She's literally right on the beach. She's got beach. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Um, so I I wanted to get some information to her because I've you know this. Uh, subject piqued my interest years ago, and I've been really keeping up with it. And you know, thanks to you, uh, I've learned a whole lot. So, uh, okay. thanks to both you. Thanks to both you and Mike. Okay, James. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, bye bye. We, uh, Mike, we got another caller here. Dennis in Michigan. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, uh, John and Mike. Um, I notice uh, I, I have a, a comment and, and another comment after that. Uh, I notice that the dates between. August 17th and September 26th is, is, is exactly 40 days and 40 nights. 40 nights. 40 nights. 40 nights. Okay, but let's get down to the nuts and bolts. The stock market is crashing. Mm -hmm. 
You need to invest in gold and silver the if you want to stay alive. The stock market was rotten to its core. Absolutely. But are you telling people to leave, to go to South America? No, What's your advice? I'm, I'm telling people that you're in for some difficult times. And I say this in my presentations. I jokingly look at them and say, you're all doomed. There's not a one of you that's going to be around 100 years from now. You're doomed. So to hell with it. Enjoy the ride. No, I tell people who are interested in listening for whatever it is I have to say <clears throat> that you're in for some difficult times. It's going to happen. There is no way to avoid it. We cannot go on as we were mm -hmm. because some of our systems were rotten to the core and our banking system, the insurance programs, all of that, stock market, Wall Street, those guys were absolutely rotten. The housing industry. <clears throat> the housing industry. That, that was bound to fail. You talk about a bubble, <clears throat> it was bound to fail. It had to fail. Well, I'm glad it failed. Hope to hell that they learn something from it. No. Okay, but we're ta are we talking about <clears throat> martial law in the United States? I mean, what are we talking here? You're, you're talking about a time when you may have martial law. Uh, it's only one step away. You know that the authority has been given to the president to declare it. Right. The Congress gave that authority to the president years ago. I've even lost track of how long it's been. But anyhow, all the president has to do, whoever he may be, and that doesn't matter much anymore either, mm -hmm. because one nitwit is very much like the other. You have a national emergency, and it's declared. Right. Boom. Martial law. Mm -hmm. You declare a national emergency, which has not been declared yet, Right. but we're right on the edge of it, Right. and you're going to have martial law. Okay, and but we gone. don't have an election, right? <clears throat> well, it, the, it, you, you're thinking about an October surprise. I have no idea. I'm asking well, you. Well, I don't know about that. I, I'm not sure it'll happen in October. I, I suspect it may occur within the next year. Hmm. But uh, I don't know. I haven't had any dreams. My dreams have been pretty fascinating recently. But none of them have been terribly troubling. Hmm. And... Uh, I know this is all happening. It's going to take place. There's, it's inevitable. It's been orchestrated. The Illuminati do exist. They are in power. They've been in power for years. They've been demonstrating that power ever since 1913, when they created the, uh, what the hell is it, this banking system? The Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve, yeah, mm -hmm. which is a private corporation. <clears throat> We lost most of it in 47. I don't know whether you were aware of that, but that was a big year. National security became everything. It became the member of the triad. 47, we declared, uh, we made the National Security Agency. We uh, formed a pact with the Brits, the Australians, the Canadians, and New Zealands the Yakuza Pact, which most people don't even know exists. <clears throat> the Yakuza crowd, all of us, Britain, U.S., Canada, New Zealand, Australia, are all like this. Um, whoever's in the White House and who's ever at Buckingham Palace, it don't matter. All right. <clears throat> the power behind the scenes has been running this damn thing since 1947. And Ike saw it scared the hell out of him. He met the Anunnaki. That scared the hell out of him. So they're pulling our strings now like they always have. Okay. So what's your solution? What would you t tell people? I mean, in facing the future, in trying to <clears throat> reinvent the future, certainly Marsha's working with people to, to become enlightened, to She's doing apply. a tremendous amount of work to help, to help people trans make this transition. Carrie, we're not just going through a transition. We're going through a transcendent transformation, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. A transcendent transformation. We're going to come out of this thing when it's all over with. Totally different species. We're not going to be the same people we, we were in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's good. And it's going to hurt. And it's going to be painful. And I tell people, and I've said this repeatedly, don't get too uptight about it. 
You've been through hell before. You're going to through a bit of it again. But once it's over, once you've made that transition, we're going to have, hopefully, a new world, a new future, a new beginning. And I think that's the end of the great year that we're going through. We're, we're going through the, the end of a 26,000-year cycle. And we're, I, I tell you, 2012 don't matter. Mm -hmm. First of all, Christ was born seven years before. And this is a fact. And if you don't believe me, get uh, Sir Lawrence Gardner, who's probably one of the best historians we've got working today. Lawrence Gardner's got the facts. Jesus was born in 7 BC on the 1st of March. Now, if you, if you want to count from his birth, like we supposedly have been doing, add seven years to 2008. You end up with 2015. That's pretty close to what... 20, oh, so 20, you're saying we're actually in the year 2015 <clears throat> now. No, you, you, we're in the year 2015 right now. Right. So yes. that means that Nibiru, when you say it's coming in 2020, is actually due in about five years. Probably. So we're looking at 2013 by our calendar. Well, no later than 2017. I'll throw 2017 out. Okay. And you can take that to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> 2017. Now okay. that, you know, that'll give or take a year or two because the, the celestial mechanics, they don't have, they haven't really worked at all yet. We've got we've got computers you wouldn't believe, but they're still trying to feed in some of the data. So are you is one of the remote viewers you're in touch with Ingo Swan? I haven't been in touch with Ingo for some time, but I, I Carrie, I've been doing some remote viewing. Right. I've even had a couple of out-of-body experiences. Mm -hmm. I've been doing a lot of meditating. When you go in, when you step into that world, there is no time. Mm -hmm. And you can talk to anybody, everywhere, all at once. Mm -hmm. And now, that sounds silly to anyone who doesn't understand what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. When you step into that realm of timelessness and you remote view and you step out of your body and you go into altered states and you meditate, you're in a timeless, infinite reality that people communicate. You'd be, some, you'd be sh shocked and amazed at the wealth of information that's out there just to tap into. The old, the old ones used to talk about the Akashic Record. Mm -hmm. It's real. It's real. Yes. And it isn't just about the past, because, Carrie, there is no past. Mm -hmm. Nor is there a future. There's only an eternal now. And a physicist sitting here in this room would say balderdash because they wouldn't grasp for a minute what I'm trying to talk about. But old Ingo would. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I've, I've been some of those places myself that you're talking about. I'm, I knew it, you see. <laughs> and so I have to say you're absolutely right. And, and it's uh, incredible pleasure for us to hear this from yourself. And um, I, you know, I would like to, at this time, just open the floor and say, is there anything that we haven't covered here that you would like to talk about? And then, of course, we would also like to invite Bill to ask you some questions. We've danced around on a whole bunch of things for the last hour. I enjoy it. I, I, I enjoy chatting with you two guys. You're, you're pleasant people. As I say, I'm an old codger, and you, you, you plug me in and turn me loose. There's no telling where I may end up. I've been around uh, 79 years this trip. I've made a dozen or two previous trips, which amazingly I, I remember quite a bit about. When you start going into that timeless realm, <clears throat> you step into that 
infinite, which we're all part of. Uh, memories of other lives come flooding into you sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh God, the things I've seen, the things I've done, the places I've been, this life are kind of shocking. The things I've done, the places I've been, and the lives I've lived before are beyond belief. I, I'm not boasting. This is not a boast. Mm -hmm. But I'm an old soul. I've been around on this planet a long time. And I amazingly remember it. Some of the memories I would rather not remember because they're painful. Mm -hmm. Hell, I have memories of Sumer. I knew the Anunnaki back then. Worked with them. I was one of their products. I know them now. And I don't have any fear. And in bringing this to a close, I, I would like to say to whoever is watching, get rid of the fear. You have nothing to fear. You are an immortal, timeless being who has an infinite future in a glorious universe that's so filled with beauty and life that we on this little tiny planet couldn't begin to grasp. But I, I, I say to people, don't be afraid, for God's sake. Gather around you those you love. Spread that love around and go into tomorrow with courage because you've been through a hell of a lot worse before. So be hopeful, love one another, and have courage. And that's really all I have to say. Well, thank you, Bob Dean. It's, it's, it's really an honor and a pleasure. Thank you, Carrie Cassidy. I just enjoyed every minute of it. I'm 79 years old. What do you mean, hold that thought? <laughs>